The first part of the system I'm going to look at transitioning to the functional core imperative shell paradigm is going to be this make move function we took to talked about earlier. I think at the moment its responsibilities are a little bit blurred and it's doing a little bit too much. Not only is it updating the game state, it's also updating the current counter and the current move. I think it should only be updating the game state and nothing else. So what I'm going to do is write a new implementation. It's going to create return a new game state and that's going to be equal to make move which takes the current game state as well as the correct row, column and counter where counter is going to either be X or zero depending on the current move. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. I'm going to head over to my tests and start writing the test first. This is very easy to test because it's going to be pure JavaScript and it's going to be entirely deterministic. The outcome of the function is going to be dependent entirely on its inputs and no global variables. What we're going to have to do is delete some of these tests. They're not going to be very useful because they're coupled to Vue's reactivity system and we're looking to move away from that coupling and make everything isolated. So I'm going to delete these tests here. Let's go ahead now and save this off. Uh, we're going to have our test running in watch mode and we're going to have to find a better implementation of make move. So what I'm going to do is keep this expected here, but we're also going to set up the current game state. I'm going to call that one initial, and it's just going to be the previous or the expected game state. But we're going to change this one counter in the middle. So we're going to attempt to move in the middle with the X counter. What this means we're going to have to do is update our make move function as well. I'm going to call this one actual, which is going to be the actual result of my, my test. And it's going to take several arguments. The first is going to be the initial state. We're also going to pass in the column, which is going to be one. The row is going to be one and the counter is going to be X in this case. Let's go ahead and update our, our assertion. We're going to expect that the actual here is going to be equal to that expected result. And this is how I like to write my test. I think it makes it very clear. You will notice that we actually got rid of this value here as well. So we're removing the coupling from views reactivity, which is a nice thing to do. And that's one of our goals. If we save this off, it is going to of course fail because we haven't imported this make move function. So let's go ahead and do that. We haven't actually exported that. So I'm going to head over to game.js and start working on this implementation now. So let's go ahead and copy this one out. We can reuse some of this. I'm going to export it. And if we save this off, we're going to get some other kind of compilation error. And that's because we haven't got these global variables anymore in our system. Let's go ahead and delete this and rewrite this implementation instead. What we're going to do is attempt to update this to have no mutation and purely de dependent on its arguments. So we're going to have that initial game state here. I'm going to call that one current. We have the column and the row and we now have the counter as well. What we're going to do to avoid mutation here is just by returning current.map. We're going to map over the rows and columns and then update them as it should be updated. We're going to start off by update our looping over each of the rows. So I'm going to call this one the row for the first index and the second one is going to be the row index. In this case, it's going to be either zero, one or two, depending on which row we're iterating over. Let's just go ahead and see if this one is working. I'm going to return the row. So what this is going to do is return the current board in its current state with no changes whatsoever. But it should at least get our test to uh, compile and run. You can see the test is now running correctly. We're just not updating the correct counter, which is exactly what we expected. The next thing we need to do is loop over each of the rows and see if the current row and column is the one we'd like to update based on these two variables up here. And if it is, we're going to return the new counter. Otherwise, we're just going to return everything as it is. I'm going to use map again. We're going to loop over the column here and we're going to grab the column index to help us check. Let's just go ahead and return the column again. So this again is going to return the exact game state without making any changes. So we're expecting the test to continue failing. And so it is. The next thing we're going to do is check against the row index and the column index. And if these are both equal to the row and column we'd like to update, we're going to return a new counter. Otherwise, we're just going to return the current counter. So what we can do is jump in here and do an if statement. I'm going to say if column index is equal to column and if row is equal to row index. So row index is equal to row. And if this is the case, I'm just going to go ahead and return column or counter rather. Otherwise, we're going to return the column. And if we save this one off, everything should hopefully be passing. And so it is. You can see here we've removed all the mutation. We're doing pure uh, functional programming here by using map. Instead of updating an initial argument, for example, current by making a copy, we're returning a new object that's been updated correctly. We can make a small refactor here to make this a little bit more concise. It's not necessary, but it is nice to see how concise functional programming can be. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this if statement. We can use a ternary operator here because there's only one check happening. So all I can do is jump in here and say return. And depending on the result of this, we're going to return either counter. Otherwise, we're going to return the column. And if we've done everything correctly here, the test should still be passing. And if I save it off, the test is going to continue passing. 
Because each of these functions only has one expression, what we can do is remove the return here, delete these curly braces, and it's going to implicitly return the result of the row.map. Let's save it off and see what happens. And that is still going to pass as well. Uh, apparently not, it looks like I made a mistake somewhere along the line. Let's see if we can figure that one out. I must have deleted the wrong brace. Let's update this one and save this off. And this one should hopefully be passing, so it is. I can do the same thing down here by removing the curly braces here and save this one off. And that is going to continue passing as well. Whether you like this style of programming or not is up to you. Both are completely valid, but the important thing here is we're not mutating any variables. We're returning a new object which represents the new state of the world. And this is entirely deterministic. We always know what's going to happen based on the inputs to this function. So it's much more easy to understand.